how do we make sure it feels natural and not commercialized? And so there's a, we don't use words like buy or add to cart or sale or discount, or those words are just kind of associated with transactions. We want it to be much more experiential. So we use words like explore, discover, um, browse, shop. Shop is a much lighter word to describe. You found the Real Estate Law Podcast. Because real estate is more than just pretty pictures, and law goes well beyond the paperwork and courtroom arguments. If you're a real estate professional or looking to build real estate expertise, then welcome to the conversation and discover more at realestatelawpodcast.com. Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Law Podcast. Thanks again for listening to us. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Jason Muth. We're here with Rory Gill from Next Home Title Town Real Estate and Urban Village Legal in Boston. Actually, today you're in Newburyport, right? I am in Newburyport today, yes, in our under construction home studio. Yeah, we have three interesting backgrounds for you. Uh, let's first introduce our guest, Mark Hostovsky from Minoan. We can't wait to hear more about what Mark has been up to with this excellent service for short-term rental operators. Well, first, Mark, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Happy to be yeah. here. We met about a month ago at a retreat in Miami for short-term rental operators, short-term rental wealth conference. Was that what yeah. it was called? Yeah. I don't know. You, I'm sure you do a lot of these conferences. And we just got talking throughout the conference and I met some of your team members there. Amazing uh, value proposition for hosts of short-term rentals and you know a really cool idea. And there are people listening to this podcast that probably have no idea what you are. And there are others that have probably seen you on other podcasts. So, you know, we'll keep both those audiences in mind, but you're coming to us from Vermont, right? I am. Yeah. Hyde Park, yeah. Vermont, which is just North of Stowe, which is sort of known as like a big ski area up here. I've seen some of your other podcasts and you always have that nice background. It looks very cabiny. I'm in one of our short-term rentals right now here in New Hampshire, which is why we have these beautiful lake stones and this fireplace. And Rory, unfortunately, you have the least interesting of the three backgrounds. <laughs> and this is the most intentional, or at least this will be one of the most intentional backgrounds. Um, but it's under construction right now. It's better than the blank void that we've been in for the past few recordings. So yeah, we're making progress. Yeah. Explain what we're doing though. What, what do you have going on back there? We wanted to have a home office um, since we're working from home a good amount. That's both um, functional and a little fashionable that shows well on camera. So we're trying to strike that balance and we're also making it from scratch ourselves. So give yeah. us a minute. Yeah. Mark, one of the companies you work with, do they involve felt on the walls? Do you have a partner for that? Yet or no? I don't know. We do. <laughs> I'd have to go back and check. We definitely work with a lot of partners who do a lot of like fabrics and fabrication. So we'll... Uh, uh, let me, yeah. let me get back to you on that one. I'll have to take a look through the catalog once again. But yeah. Mark, tell us about your story. Tell us about Minoan. You know, explain why you're going to all these short-term rental operators uh, and really, you know, talking to a lot of us about why we should be working with you guys and how you're helping solve a massive void in the industry of people that operate short-term rentals. Yeah, of course. So I think the most important thing for people to know is what really drives all the things we do is this core belief that the moments that happen between people and products within these rentals are incredibly rich and valuable. And our big belief is that hosts aren't fully capturing that value or getting credit for that value. And the reason why we believe this, and I believe this specifically, you know, I have a background in retail. I worked at a company called Jet.com, which is an e-commerce platform. Uh, the founders sold that business to Walmart. I spent a few years at Walmart uh, learning sort of the store side of the business or brick and mortar retail. I spent a lot of time in Bentonville. And um, my biggest takeaway from the time spent at Jet and e-commerce, the time spent at Walmart on the store side is that the best product experiences don't actually happen on screens the way they do in e-commerce. They don't happen on shelves and aisles the way they do in stores. They happen in real moments of use. And on the retail side, like that was really obvious to us because all the buyers who are making their inventory decisions, they ask for samples. They say, oh, you want me to carry this coffee maker? Like send it to me. Let me see. Let me give this thing a whirl. Let me use it for a few months, see how it holds up. You know, let me decide if it's good enough for our customers. And, and if they like it and they put it through the ringer and it passes, then they bring it into inventory. But by the time the customer interacts with that 
coffee maker, the very rich interaction that you know the buyer has had with that product over the course of a few months is now distilled down to a few images on a screen on e-commerce. And then on stores, it's distilled down to a few images and copy on a cardboard box on a shelf. Um, and so we believe that these real moments of use that happen in rentals are incredibly valuable to these brands and the suppliers that you buy them from. Um, and so what we've done is we've built a platform for hosts that's really, you can think of it as a platform to manage anything having to do with the stuff that you need to put into your space that makes it so that your guests aren't sitting, you know, in an empty <laughs> home. So buying linens, mattresses, artwork, uh, appliances, cookware, silverware, flatware, uh, anything. I mean, you know, we work with over 200 uh, brands and you know, having a place where hosts can buy all these items from 200 suppliers at at good discounts. Generally, our discounts are are between um, like 25 and 50 percent. There are some that are lower due to margins or some that are much higher, like certain categories have uh, a lot of margin, like linens and soft goods. So we can get much better discounts for hosts. And it's a place where, where hosts can buy everything in one place across 200 suppliers. It's all in one place. You can see tracking. You can see savings. Um, and then the last thing we do is we can help hosts make their property shoppable to the guests. So if uh, a guest is staying, Jason, at the property that you're at right now and they love this, you know, wooden um, sailboat behind you and they're like, this is incredible. I really like this. I think this will look great, you know, on my mantle. We can help you build a site with Minoan that's like, oh, you really like this? Okay, well, like, this is where we got it. This is the backstory. And it's, you know, $1.99. You know, if you like it, you can add to cart. Or if you like the soap and shampoo, or if you like the towels, or if you like sheets and mattresses, of course, you're a big seller. And so we offer that service as well. Why do we do that? Going back to what I said initially, we believe that these moments are really special and really valuable. Brands spend a lot of money to try and create rich moments, you know, on Facebook or on Google. And if you believe those moments are really valuable and that hosts are creating really rich moments, then you also should believe two things. You should believe that hosts should pay less to bring this stuff into their space and that they should earn money whenever they create a moment of inspiration where a host loves something so much they want to bring it into their own life. That was kind of long-winded, but that's sort of what we do in our nucleus. That's the mission. Yeah. You know, that's why you're doing this. Rory, Think back to when we were in Canada with our dog and we were staying where? Montreal with that. We were, that we stayed at the same hotel chain, um, Le Germain in uh, Montreal and Quebec City. And we brought our dog with us. And I remember you commenting on how much you love the dog bed or she took, really took to the dog bed and you love that dog bed. So you reached back out to the whole chain, hotel chain after we left and asked, you know, where did they get that? And it took them a little while to get back to you, but they did. Um, and they were able to to identify the Canadian supplier. Um, and you ordered a, a, that dog bed because you had such a good experience with it on that trip. Yeah. I remember checking out and saying that, you know, where did you get this bed? They didn't know. But I thought nothing of it. Two weeks later, I get this random email. You know, Monsieur Jason, we found where we you know, our supplier for the bed. I was floored that they wrote back to me like that level of hospitality. And we're telling the story, you know, eight years later, if there was oh. a QR code right next to the bed, or if the room was shoppable, I don't think I would have found that to be too presumptuous or tacky. It would have been like, Hey, do you like any of the stuff in the room? Like if you want, here's where we got it. I definitely bought that bed and we still have it. We actually have it at one of our short-term rentals now because mm -hmm. our dog has since passed away. But you know, I love this bed so much. We wash the inserts and let other dogs sleep on it. I also had a situation many, many years ago where I was at a hotel in Chicago and I loved their bedspread so much. And I, I did the same thing. I was trying to figure out where they bought it because I wanted to buy it. And they wouldn't tell me because it was custom <laughs> for them. I see what you're saying, Mark. I mean, there are situations where as a consumer, I've definitely been in environments where I appreciate the good or you know, so much that I actually want one myself. And sometimes tracking that down where they found it is difficult. I've slept on, in fact, I was just out at the Bigger Pockets conference in San Diego and I liked the pillows. I took a picture of the tag on it. I was like, hey, maybe I'll get these pillows someday. I've done this like three or four times because as Rory could attest, I cannot find the perfect pillow. I just can't. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you're you're definitely onto something there. And 
you know, from a host perspective, I have to keep remembering that's a big component of your business is helping guests find uh, the products that are in these in these short term rentals that they're staying in. And then, you know, there's some affiliate revenue, which you could talk about in a second for the host. But, you know, from an operator's perspective, having the one cart, the one stop, the account manager that can get everything. I mean, it is very, very convenient for a service like that. Yeah. Thank you. I could also attest right now, I mean, like we're up in New Hampshire and I was just next door where we're building a house and it's it's being painted inside right now. So we're really close. So Minoan's, you know, gonna be getting a cart full of stuff soon, hmm. which is great. I think about that property and I'm saying, well, this could be a really good test for myself to see like how we do with mattresses through Minoan and sheets yeah. and towels and everything and really kind of getting this place up and running because you're probably working with ho- with operators that both have a house full of stuff and they're onboarding other things. So talk a little bit about how hosts are finding their way to you and what some of the feedback you've gotten so far has been from hosts and operators. Yeah. So a lot of hosts are, we've done a lot in the last few months to try and get out there a bit. So we're going to conferences. I obviously do a lot of podcasts and we do a lot of collaborations with, you know, influencers in the space who really serve as like, Authority figures for hosts who are new to the game and trying to figure out how to, to get things going or 30 authority figures for hosts who are in it and scaling rapidly. And so that's usually how folks find out about us. The feedback we, you know, we've been through a few iterations of this and a lot of the feedback we got in the earliest phases of what we we're building has influenced what we have currently. And then feedback we're getting currently will influence what we will look like in the future. But early on, a lot of the feedback we were getting when we were asking people about purchasing for their properties was that um, it was a mess and there was no good system for it. The best system seemed to be an Excel spreadsheet. But, you know, if you're ordering from 20 different suppliers, which is not unheard of, I mean, to, to furnish a, like a standard two bedroom, uh, from scratch, if it really has nothing, you're, you're spent. You're, you're buying like over 200 items. There's like, and there's really dense areas like the kitchen, like you're buying a ton of stuff for. And mm-hmm. but um, you know, if you're buying from 20 different suppliers, it's like okay, place 20 different orders. I'm gonna now that I have to track those in 20 different email chains. Um, actually budgeting and figuring out when stuff will be delivered can be painful. So okay, like this is the budget. Okay, how much? Okay, well, it's across all these suppliers. So how am I staying on budget? Am I staying on time? Okay, wait, this one won't deliver until two weeks. So that's not going to work. So the feedback we got early on was, man, there's so much administrative work in the ordering process. And even the big institutional, we have hundreds of properties, we're like, we don't feel confident in the organization and the system we have to manage it. And so that's guided a lot of our principles for the current version of the portal, which is you know, there's 200 suppliers, you can go and shop on their websites, bring the products back into Minoan, request a quote, we will quote it out for you all in one place and tell you how much, re- what it is retail, how much you save through Minoan, how much shipping costs, when things are going to be delivered. Um, and you can just check in one place to understand the, you know, the statuses of all your deliveries. Mm-hmm. I actually did a quote yesterday for a chandelier. I ended up doing it through Wayfair directly because, you know, Wayfair is more of a marketplace and I don't think you have the same discounts you could offer through Wayfair. And then, but I wanted to see what the experience was like. And, you know, it was actually really simple. I mean, you have the Chrome extension, you know, clicked on, I think I clicked on the Wayfair website and the Minoan popped up somehow. So you basically just log in and put the product name and the color and the quantity and then add to cart and then boom, it's in your cart and then you hit a button and then there's a quote there later in the day. So I could even test it. I've gone through the quoting process so far and that was pretty simple. Yeah. Wayfair is an interesting one because they are a marketplace and we did have an agreement with them previously, which was like a base, just standard discount above the business pricing. But then when we were quoting things out, we were like, wait a minute, this is really inconsistent. <laughs> like we should be getting X percent off and we're promising this, but then sometimes you're going like this and that. And so we ended up, we're currently working on a new sort of pricing structure with them. So right now it's sort of standard uh, business pricing, which, you know, if yeah. you want to order everything in one place, it's like, we allow you to do that. But 
I don't know if you can wait. It sounds like probably not, but we are doing something special with Wayfair for the holidays. We're going to be doing like an exclusive discount sort of push for mm -hmm. hosts. Although it sounds like if this is an empty home right now, you might not yeah. be able to wait. Well, I mean, I'm, I need to, the elect electrician's coming in, so I'm going to get a uh, chandelier for him to install. It's only one item. It's not a big deal, but I'll wait for everything else, which is good because yeah, yeah. The, we'll, the bulk we'll you, of what I have we to actually order is haven't, coming up. We haven't announced this yet, but we're doing a really fun holiday campaign with uh, 10 of our suppliers, which is sort of in this like theme of like, you know, your properties need love too, holiday love too. Like yeah. holidays aren't just about shopping for <laughs> your friends and family and, and getting some really fun discounts on like really good uh, discounts right. on some brands for hosts to try and test out. For us, we're kind of interested to see if, you know, there's so much focused on the consumer during holiday. We're like, what about these hosts? Like, it's a great time for them to rethink, you know, a lot of it's off peak in a lot of parts of mm -hmm. the country. And so people are mm -hmm. thinking about furnishing usually that time of the year, but yeah. Anyway, it's more, more to come there. You know, by the time this comes out, you, you'll actually be in that promotion. Oh, perfect. So, you know, <laughs> people who are listening right now, go, you know, go to we'll make it a formal Ex announcement. Yeah. Come to Minoan, sign up and you can get some really good, uh, some really good discounts and costing on some very well-known good brands. Yeah. No, I mean, like we should talk about some of the brands that you have because they are really well-known brands. I mean, like the most obvious one I thought of was Crate and Barrel and Pottery Barn, right? Yeah, Crate and Barrel, Pottery Barn, West Elm, uh, Parachute. You know, we work with um, a lot of like even these hospitality grade uh, mm -hmm. linen fryers, like a Frette and a Matuk. That's generally for people who are doing like who are get buying like lots and lots of yeah um, sheets. But in the kitchen, we work with Oxo. We work with Caraway, really cool brand. We just started working with called Leeway that makes these like prepackaged full kitchen sets like glasses bowls plates mugs and yep. and they're packaged in a way where they the breakage is really low and it all comes together and we get really good I mean, we're talking about almost half off already very competitive like mm -hmm. even their retail pricing is very competitive and they're giving us very strong pricing for our hosts so yeah there's there's some good again it's over two 200 mm -hmm. brands a lot of big national brands we do a big business with article um and there's a lot of fun smaller independent uh brands as well we're really interested in expanding um more of like a localized presence so uh in vermont for example like we're we're testing onboarding some vermont specific brands that don't have a huge you know they're small teams but we think vermont hosts would really love support <laughs> vermont brands and then that mm -hmm. means guests are getting exposed to vermont brands and can buy it. so it's better for the the ecosystem so we do work with some of these smaller niche players as well. Yeah. You know, thinking about it from the perspective of an operator, we're on the smaller side for operators, you know, like under five units at this point. What are the people that are signing up? Who are they? Are they one, two, three unit operators? Are they scaling up to 50? Like, who are you working with from a host perspective? It really started with, I think, the independent, you know, zero to 10, I would say, um, is where we started. And but to be honest, as, as we've one big learning for us has been, oh, wow, nobody has a good system for this. <laughs> it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you have zero to 10 properties or you you're scaling from 40 to 100 or 100 to 150. It really, like an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheet seems to be the best system. And so we started with the uh, smaller, more independent host, but we've been working with a lot more property management groups and larger operators. But we still support both. I mean, the reality is the need to see this information in one place, get these quotes and save money is true for everyone. The, the difference is for some of these larger operators, we are doing like true wholesale bulk uh, pricing quotes. And it's almost more like an RFP where we're helping them put together programs. So it's like we need a linen program. We need an amenity program. We need to have standardized kitchens where it's like anytime we launch a new unit, it's like, here are the 40 things that I always buy. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on some of that with the larger operators. But but it's really important to me that we don't look past the smaller independents, uh, to be honest. I think like their moments are just as valuable. And, and oftentimes, to be honest, sometimes they're even more valuable because the smaller independent host is like a little bit more of a curator and like um, thinking about the, the guest experience in a different way than sometimes a big operator is very like, you know, this is FF&E and OS&E. It's like a cost, 
you know, line item. So yeah, what I found interesting about the the conference that we met at is that the people that are there are doing this as a business, right? And a lot of people that operate short term rentals, it, it is a business, but some people are just doing it for additional income, and they don't see the opportunity that some of the you know quote unquote business people see, like where they're appointing their places with. The cheapest stuff they could find on Facebook Marketplace or hand me down furniture. And, you know, we certainly have some of that in a couple of the places that we've had for a while. Like if it's in good condition and we want to shift it from one place to another, we've been able to do that. That's the type of thing that I think any operator is able to to benefit from a service like this, where you have a long list of uh, vendors that you can pick from and have it all be brand new, right? You know, Rory, how difficult was it to appoint our place uh, next door? It was in fits and starts. There's just so much decision making we could take at one time. It really was a, um, you know, an endeavor unto itself. We had to stop and consider every little thing. It was fun, but it's really hard to scale doing that. We recommend like when when people come and talk to like, how should we think about furnishing? I think it's nice to have some of these like staple statement pieces that might be from Facebook Marketplace or mm -hmm. a hand me down. But we definitely encourage people not. You know, there needs to be a consistent, thoughtful design in the space that translates directly to your ADR. I mean, it, it, it translates into how well this property is going to photograph and then how well it photographs and presents itself, the consistency of the look and feel, the thought, you know, the level of detail into the thought that makes it really elevated it has a direct impact in your ADR and what you can charge. And, and the payback period of furnishing your property well and sort of a designer conscious design conscious way is very quick i mean if you look at like hotels or the one hotel spends a ton of money mm. on each room relative to another let's say mid-level counterpart the rooms aren't bigger in some cases they're smaller but the rooms are not bigger but they spend a lot more in each room and they charge like three times as much now they have other services that they you know there's like a nice restaurant and there's other things they do to make it elevated and elegant, but I think the biggest misstep we see people make is they they see the furnishings just as a cost center and not as an investment in ADR, which is what they really are. And and for us, we say it's not just an investment in ADR. There is a, this investment that certain items, if you bring them in, the commissions may make it so that they pay for themselves. Like we have certain items, fellow tea kettles. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the fellow brands so these really beautiful looking gooseneck tea kettles and they're really nice at retail they're they can be kind of pricey they can be like a hundred bucks i mean through minoan we can get them to host i think 40 percent off and so we sell a decent amount of them but we sell a lot of them to guests you know mm -hmm. and so we've had a we've had um we just got an order for one i think yesterday morning and it's like okay if, if that property sells like four more of those over the course of the next three years, four years, like it's paid for itself basically. Mm -hmm. And so now you have this really nice product that is in your property that's helping create this elevated experience. It's helping you capture a higher ADR and you've, and it's eventually if effectively paid for itself because you mm -hmm. bought it at a discount and then you're earning commissions every time you sell it. And so that's, that's a lot of the evangelism that we do for hosts in the industry is to, to think about furnishing as an investment and and to be to like any investment you make it should be really intentional and really well thought out i believe it's become more and more apparent to us as you know we've worked on more short-term rentals that we're selling an experience not just a house and i think a lot of our design work and how we not just furnish aesthetically but how we equip the home has kind of changed with that mindset it's not just about recreating what they have at home it's about creating an experience and um, it becomes more and more challenging when you adopt that framework because now you have to, you do have to have that consistent design. You have to have something that's unique. You have to have something that's thoughtful. You know, with that, the, the de number of decision points explodes. Short term um, operators are selling an experience and they have to think that way. Mark, you might remember the question I asked in my in Miami, but you might not. I'm going to ask it again here because mm. I think it was a good question. And Bill Faith uh, said it was a good question. So if Bill said it was a good question, it was a good question. The question was similar to your tea kettle story. It was, you know, as a host, we would like to know what are those products that people are buying more of and can we get those into our short-term rentals? Because, you know, if there was a list of things where it's like, hey, these are the ones that are most likely to be purchased by your guests, you know, I would behoove myself to not have those things inside our place to try to make some commissions on them. 
Yeah. So one thing we want to move towards is full transparency where it's like, here's an item you're looking at, here's its conversion rate, here's the commission, and you can and we can actually estimate a payback period for you. We're not quite there yet. Um, we're working towards it. But what we can do is talk about like categorically what items tend to convert pretty well. And for us, mm -hmm. there's no surprise, but like linens convert really well. We saw a ton of parachute, um, mm -hmm. lots of, of guests will sleep in a bed, usually not a mattress from parachute. Usually the, the mattress will be somewhere else, but the linens, the pillows, the, the, um, the comforter, the duvet, we saw a lot of parachute. Um, and then soaps and shampoos too. So, you know, we saw a decent amount of public goods to guess. Mm -hmm. Um, there's this boutique Philly brand called Franklin and Whitman, um, which, uh, we onboarded for a local Philly, uh, property. We've sold a few of those, um, soaps and shampoos is another one. And then these like unique, it's just really funny. We sell the, the there's this long tail where we've sold items, but we don't have like statistical significance or anything that we would feel comfortable putting in front of a host. Cause the data is so small where it's like, yeah, okay. Like. Do we really feel like this converts at like 6%? Well, it's only because we have been one property and, you know, right. guests have buyed all, have purchased all, all sorts of things. We've sold like uh, teak stools that were in uh, showers because guests really enjoyed the convenience of being able to sit down on something when you're shaving your legs and not doing, doing it standing in the shower. We've sold uh, hanging hooks hanging hooks that would line, you know, like an entryway, which mm -hmm. I almost didn't even want to set them up in the shoppable experience. Cause I was like, who's going to buy this? This is just mm -hmm. like, you know, uh -huh. it's such, it's almost come It almost feels like a commodity item, but, um, yeah. but then all of a sudden it's like, wow, someone just bought four of these. The fellow tea kettles are another good one. We're really interested in getting into some other appliances like coffee makers and mm -hmm. hair dryers and stuff like that, but we're still building out the assortment. Uh, and finding the right suppliers there. But um, yeah, I'd say like the, the highest converting would be soap, shampoos, uh, linens, and uh, towels also like bath towels would be another one. Um, but everything we, we've sold pretty much everything at some point. Yeah. We've gotten the mattress question a couple of times. I know that mattresses, people, you've sold a bunch of those, but you know, yeah. if, if guests, it's, it's a little chicken in the egg because I don't think guests know to ask us for these things, but the ones that have asked, they've asked about mattresses. So I wonder if there's a bit of an education that you, maybe you're doing this, helping your hosts explain to their guests that some of the items are indeed shoppable. Because if people are regular Airbnb customers or they don't know to ask, they're probably not going to ask. What types of um, materials, are there marketing materials that uh, a host could have in their house? It's just QR codes or websites, or can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, we spent a lot of time thinking about this because what's really important to us, we also work with some hotels, you know, some of these hotels are like a thousand bucks a night. And so mm -hmm. we're very conscious of not impeding on the guest experience. It should really enhance the guest experience and not commercial, overly commercialize it. And so there's a few ways that we, we have a lot of work to do here on also, like we've been really focused on the helping on the procurement side and streamlining that. Next year, we're going to start to focus back more on the shoppable side and making that easier and adding a little more data, like some of the things you're asking for. But some things we've done is we have designed, you know, I'm holding up this little, uh, we, we have this like powder coated note card holder that we designed. And then we put these cards in them that say, this one's kind of gross because it's just been sitting at my desk, but it says found something you like, scan this code to shop the space. And we're doing a lot of experimentation to see like, oh, like one of the hotels we work with in the Hamptons called the Menhaden, they text their guests after the first 24 hours and say, hey, you like what you see? If you want to learn more about the products we've used to curate your experience, click here. And that takes them to a page where it walks them through all the products in the room and, and they do well, you know, they sell a lot mm -hmm. of stuff. And they sell a lot of mattresses, you know, which are high, you know, it's good, good high price point. But this is still a work in progress for us. What we're really focused on is how do we make sure it feels natural and not commercialized? And so there's, a, we don't use words like buy or add to cart or sale or discount, or those words are just kind of associated with transactions. We want it to be much more experiential. So we use words like explore, discover browse shop shop is a much lighter word to describe you know retail this one like i said says found something you like so we're being very intentional about 
making sure it elevates the guest experience and it's sort of like hey if you want to learn more we're here if you don't mm -hmm. you know go do you but because i think what you you know when you were talking earlier i i was just traveling I actually just got back from my honeymoon and we were in italy and uh like one of the hotels we stayed at like the robes had this big paper like <laughs> thing around them that were like hey if you like this like you know call the front desk and we can um figure something out or we could call mm -hmm. the front desk to understand to learn more and i was like this is done so poorly like it's this piece of paper that's holding my robe like together the way for me to there, it's a very high friction oh i have to like call the front desk i don't want to talk to somebody <laughs> about, right, right. I get, how much is it you're gonna make me get on the phone to just figure out like how much this costs and so we're trying to take sort of everything we've learned about e-commerce, so everything Amazon and these great e-commerce companies have done to move towards convenience and ease of use, take that and then bring it into this sort of native hospitality ecosystem. Yeah. Did did I not know that you just got married? Have you Were you married since the conference that we met? No, I got married after the conference. I got married uh, September 3rd. Wow, you've had you've had a busy few weeks then. I have, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, wait, September third, that was before the conference. I think Miami was. Oh, it was. Early. Sorry, yeah. you're right. It was the week before the conference, and then the wait, honeymoon. So you... We left October third, so we took a month between. Okay, yeah, that that that's pretty common. Um, well, congratulations on your. Uh, Thank you. Your, for some reason, I didn't I didn't realize that maybe it wasn't brought up at the conference. But yeah, you know that paper around the robe does feel very presumptuous. You know, so you know it's it's great that you've kind of given some thought to the curation and the language that you're using, so it doesn't feel like you're just walking into you know someone's Airbnb that happens to be a store. Yeah. But it makes me curious about, you know, the place that we're about to furnish next door, you know, it might be a good little test for me just to see, you know, if I put a lot of stuff in there from Minoan, you know, how things convert, because I have a bunch of places that, you know, they're fully furnished. So I don't really need a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. And there might be some other places that maybe you need a couple places here and there, a couple things here and there. So you can kind of just buy them through Minoan and get the discounts. Uh, but a place that is a blank slate, you know, that would be an interesting test for us. So, you know, we'll do a follow up in yeah. many months after we get it uh, fully furnished and we'll see if we actually have we can look at the data. We can pull up the data. Yeah. Be like, All right. How many people are scanning the code? What pages are they spending time on? What are they? You know, that would be fun, actually. That's the stuff that I'd love to see, because like, you know, let's say that I put a QR code that you just showed me, you know, in our place. Do I get notified every time somebody scans the QR code or is there a portal I could log into to have a look and see how many people started browsing? That's part of the reason why we're getting our own data organized mm -hmm. internally, like setting up an events based infrastructure so that when someone clicks and moves, we're tracking it and logging it, you know, piping that into, you know, like, a, I mean, and now I'm talking about stuff much smarter people than myself, you know, my co-founder Shobit does all this for us, but yeah. piping that into like an actual warehouse or uh, like a snowflake. And then, and then we have to put something on top of that so we can pull it out and make it like queryable or easy for someone to just see what they want to see which is how many people have scanned so that's all stuff that we're working on um for next year but yeah we're, we're interested too and we're interested in testing things out like okay well what if we put soap in the number one spot or the linens in the number one spot or we're finding sort of like surprise and delight items like we while i was in italy stayed at this hotel that had something called a mocha i'm not a big coffee drinker but when in you know when in rome Mm -hmm. Drink Literally. a lot of espresso. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I there was this really cool little coffee maker there. And I was like, I've never seen anything like this. It's like got like a little lid on top, but there's this like, and it's called a mocha. You basically fill the bottom with water, you put beans in this thing on top of it, you boil it, the water comes up through the stem, through the beans, into this like tower, and then it kind of pours out into the into the pitcher above. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome. And it was cool. Mm -hmm. It was like this. Italian company that had invented this like a long time ago. And like, obviously I'm a sucker for this stuff. Part of the reason why we started Minoan, but I bought one. Um, and I don't even like really drink. I was so in the moment, you know? <laughs> um, and I think finding those items that can really inspire and, and, and make it. And I'm going to remember that just like you remember the dog bed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to remember that for the rest of my life. And I'll have this little mocha and it'll remind me of that moment. And so 
yeah, finding like what are the products that create those moments and mm -hmm. um and how does that impact, you know, a lot of other things? It's something that we're going to use data to explore. Yeah. Well, now you're going to be a coffee drinker and every time you look at your fancy Italian coffee maker, you're going to remember your honeymoon and remember your wedding and all that. So it's going to bring back all those great memories yeah. and that's what is going to happen when people are buying things in the Airbnbs that they stayed in it's gonna you know remind them of the experience they had at you know someone's beautiful vacation home yeah um one, one thing i've found interesting about you guys and you know when i think but i was first introduced to minoan i had two months ago you know and i told you this we were in the pool also together i was like you guys retargeted me a ton <laughs> yeah <laughs> right on instagram um so and then i think you said to sage like you know hey everything's working right the marketing works yeah <laughs> um and i was asking questions about manoa like in the mastermind group that i'm in and you know it was very much like you know sit tight we have a lot of things coming up with them um you know i i've thought it was interesting that you are going right to a lot of these not just influential hosts but hosts of all levels and you're asking a lot of questions and you know you're testing your way into success um you know you're definitely deep in the community of people that have influence with short-term rentals that's what i've i've observed so far and you know i feel as though just conversations like this and conversations that you and i have had and other ones that you've had with other people that are far more um intelligent than i am and have a lot more experience than i do like you're just you're filing it away you know you're saying oh this person asked for this so maybe we should put that onto our roadmap somewhere and you know if you're listening to this podcast saying well you know this these guys aren't amazon but you know it's good that they're kind of building it as they're going that's what companies do I mean, that's what short-term operators do. We build it as we go. I mean, I can't tell you, Rory, how many times do I get a comment from a guest? Usually good comments, but every so often I get feedback where I'll make a change immediately as a result of, of what that guest said. I had a guest that told me that I didn't have measuring spoons and a knife sharpener. I bought them the next day and they're going to be in the property. Like, it's just, I kind of have that, that's... I test my way to success as well. That's what you guys are doing at Minoan. And, you know, it's it's good that you're you're welcoming this feedback from hosts um you know it gives it a little bit more of a curated personal experience like you're trying to give um and it's very non amazon you know amazon's amazon's great like i just put a huge order in with amazon literally a couple of days ago but it's stuff that you you know you're not really selling batteries and lucite stands and you know all that stuff that i know i need cleaning supplies i mean you have some cleaning supplies there but like you know it's just the basic stuff like bissell yeah. and will light um you know, so, and, and it was super convenient going into my history from the past five or six years on Amazon, finding the stuff I've bought in the past and just buying it again. And then taking that URL and putting it in that same spreadsheet that you talked about earlier that we all do, because that's the system that we all have. Um, so there is there is a benefit to that. And I could see as people are getting to use Minoan more and more, they'll be able to go into their history and say, hey, get me that room in the box that worked for our place in Vermont. I'm doing a place in Maine and I need that same room. Click, 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 boom, there it is. That's probably the vision, right? Yeah. It's just making it really, really easy. And um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we're doing some cool stuff on quotes and ordering this quarter and next mm -hmm. quarter. But even this idea of like being able to like set it and forget it and just say like, okay, here are the cleaning supplies we order. We <laughs> generally need to order it every three months, like subscription. I just want it. And then going in and saying, I don't need this or um, like we want to avoid situations where someone's like, shoot, we're running low on something and you need to sprint out or run and grab stuff. But these are like you said, these are all things that we heard from hosts and we're like, OK, can we, yeah, we could do that. That wouldn't be that. OK, let's add it. Let's experiment and test it out. Yeah. I was I've been floored in in meeting people like yourself and and short term rental <laughs> operators and people that are in this mastermind with the systems that they have, like because there's a lot of great operations out there. I think that's that is a small, small single digit percentage of people that are running Airbnbs. A lot of folks, if you're not, you know, evolve or one of the big companies, you're the next tier down that's building all your systems up. And then beneath that is a massive, massive group of operators that are just trying to figure their way out and could probably use a lot of help from companies like yourself and some of the uh you know really smart minds that are in this still emerging industry, which um, you know, just when you think that you've seen everything and heard from everybody and there's enough Airbnbs out there, then suddenly the inventory goes up and there's a lot more operators out there that Rory and I have talked about this. We have a bunch more uh, places that are operating around one of the lakes that we're on in New Hampshire. And I don't know, I kind of, I don't mind the competition. I just want them to do it well. 
Yeah. Right. Like we've talked about that, Rory, right? Yeah, we sure have. Um, all right, Jason, before we head to the um, final questions, there is a business question that, um, that I'm, I really kind of want to ask here. Um, I know Scott Galloway, I think is the one who says that in a time of a gold rush, you want to be the one selling shovels and uh, picks because you're the one that's really going to profit in the long term. And that's yeah. kind of how I think of um, this business in support of the short term rental gold rush. Um, so for the benefit of those who are thinking through their business ideas or their niches in real estate, um, can you tell us how you came upon um, this niche for your business? Yeah, it really, um, it was really informed by my uh, retail background and the kind of the richness of the moments between uh, people and products in these spaces. And then I did have my own experience where I stayed at <clears throat> a short term rental in upstate New York. Um, my uh, now wife and I woke up and we like looked at each other and we're like, wow, we it's like eight o'clock. We never sleep like this. What is this? You know, we ripped the sheets off the mattress to figure out what the mattress was. We were checking the uh, linens for the tags, um, uh, talking, you know, going back and talking about knife sharpeners. We were, uh, we made like a summer salad. It was like a yurt, basically. We did the classic New York City thing and we paid a lot of money to go, you know, glamping. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a petite like counter space in this kitchen. And um, all the knives were wall mounted um, and super nice and sharp. and. I was like cutting tomatoes. I was like, this is like, you know, we need new knives. I don't know why. This is not what it feels like when I'm cutting tomatoes at home. And um, yeah, we we emailed the host and said, where did you get this? You know, boom, 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 all these things. And um, yeah, and she got back to us and gave us a few links. And uh, I just had this moment where I was like, in my day job, brands, this knife brand that I'm about to buy, this mattress brand that I'm about to buy, this linen brand, are spending so much money on Facebook and Google to try and create meaningful moments. And yet, I've just had the most meaningful moment you can have. I slept on that mattress for eight hours. I loved it so much that I'm now trying to buy it. And that money that flows to Facebook and Google is not flowing to this host. And when I buy this mattress, that's not going back to the host. And that was sort of the initial moment where I was like, I think that there's value that's in these spaces that is not captured. It's not priced in to how the host is operating. Um, and we honestly sort of stumbled into, I did not know much about short-term rentals. I've since learned that it is, you know, a gold rush and there's, it is exploding at an incredible rate um but that was how it how it all started um and i think we're you know we were just sort of riding the wave and, and evangelizing this concept of native retail that we call which is like all about using you know use products and see if you like them and if you like them buy it you know yeah um there's no returns we get like no returns because you know, it's not like e-commerce where you buy something, you get it and you're like, oh, that's not what I, right? You know, that's not what I thought it was going to be. And um, so, but that's We've how been that's there how before get, get sucked into an Instagram ad. Next thing you know, something's coming from Shenzhen and it's like, you know, a completely different color and size. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, great. You know, it just, just when everyone thinks that like all the ideas are taken, um, <clears throat> you know, new ideas like this come out there and you find a great audience of, of people um, you're making all the right, uh, connections in this industry from what, from what I've seen so far. Uh, and, you know, we're looking forward to seeing where things are headed for Minoan. Um, I'm looking forward to using uh, the service from top to bottom uh, for a place that we're about to start. So, you know, we'll have to report back on that in a few. Yeah, episodes, please. But, I was just going to uh, say, yeah. I want, I would love to hear the, the good, the bad and the ugly. So we can, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't, I can't wait to do it. Like you literally, I have my paint swatches, like 
literally right here. These are going on the wall right now next door. <laughs> so once that's done, flooring in, everything, then we can actually start furnishing. Um, why don't we get to our final couple questions that we ask all of our guests in the podcast, and then we'll uh, have you tell everybody where they can learn more about Minoan and sign up for an account if they are a short-term rental host. Yeah. Um, so Mark, we ask these questions of everyone that's on the podcast. The first question is, if you can get on stage for a half hour and talk about any subject in the world with zero preparation, what would that be? I would probably talk about, I mean, I could talk about entrepreneurship and um, I'm just passionate about it. So I could easily fill 30 minutes of time. I think if I was really trying to preach or like push out something that I'm really passionate about, I'd probably talk about the importance of accessibility. Um, you know, I grew up in a household, my mom and my sister are both deaf. Um, so growing up, you know, I, you know, you'd notice very clearly that there's certain information and things that they just don't have access to that <clears throat> most people don't realize in the same way that there's lots of other oppressed groups that don't have access to things that I'm not fully even aware of, but this idea of access and equal access is something I'm very passionate about. And I think access is the great equalizer, you know, access to information, access to to work and stuff like that. So that's probably if I really wanted to preach, that's I think what I would do. Two excellent topics. I have seen you talk for about 20 minutes. I don't know how long you're on the stage there. Oh yeah. You're, you're a very good speaker, so I'm sure it'll be oh, thank uh, you. Th that would be an ex excellent uh conversation to listen to. The second question we have for you, tell us something that happened early in your life or career that impacts the way that you're working today. Um I think going back to, I guess, off of the story I just shared with my mom, and my sister being deaf, I, I witnessed a lot of um, instances of like broken communication where, you know, two people come together and have an interaction and then leave. And then me being hearing and hearing English and also understanding sign language, I could be like, oh, that, you know, a hearing and a deaf person. I'm like, oh, that interaction, they did not, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. they just had two totally different conversations, like nothing went through. And so I've been very intentional. <clears throat> I try to be very intentional about communication and over communicating and making sure that, especially with my team, like we're all on the same page. Like I really want to make sure that when, when I say something, it's not being interpreted in different ways and being very direct and clear and then checking with everyone being okay. Now you, what do you think? Like, how did you read that? Okay, good. And so I think the the importance of communication and how easily people can miscommunicate without realizing it um, has been, I think that would be a big one. Yeah. Rory, we've talked a lot about email tone, haven't we? Sometimes that's just so hard to dig into. No, it's easy to to go off and completely misunderstand somebody's intentions by email. Um, yeah. I do it all the time. That's that's what Jason's alluding to. My confession is I misread people's intentions all the time over email. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I think it's like hard. Um, yeah, but I think you know, Rory will read an email <laughs> one way, and then I'll reread the same words back in a different tone. I'll be like, "Are you sure that that's what you heard?" Because <laughs> you always go directly <laughs> to the the worst, and I'm like, "Well, maybe they meant this instead." But you know, sometimes a a terse sentence in an email doesn't mean that they're speaking negatively about you. They're just kind of getting to the point quickly. But yeah, right. communications it's it's tough, and especially in a world for people that have different abilities and rely on sign language and rely on you know clear visual communication. I can imagine that's a that that's a challenge. Challenge. So, you know, I'm I'm glad you're 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 taking the experience of your family into your professional world. Uh, final of the final questions we have is tell us something you listen to, watching, or reading these days. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll do two here. So, one business book and one uh, fiction book. The business book I'm reading, which is really nerdy and uh, my partner thinks is very dry, is a book called 21st Century Monetary Policy. <laughs> by Ben Bernanke. Um, I just, like I studied economics in school. I love economics. I love entrepreneurship is basically microeconomics. It's understanding. And then, uh, you know, the Fed and managing the economy and interest rates is macro. And it's really complex. And like, no matter how much I read about it, I never really feel like I understand how it all, how it all connects together. And I think um, that book has been really interesting and I'm highlighting a lot of, I feel like I'm back in school 
learning about it. I think it's really, honestly, it's very relevant now because we are hiking um, the federal funds rate, which then impacts mortgages and interest rates. So that one's interesting. The fiction book I'm listening to uh, on Audible is called Hail Mary Mm -hmm. by Andy Weir. It's, It's the author who wrote The Martian. And it's just like really fun uh science fiction like very sciencey fun book about you know the world and aliens and i just i felt like i needed something where my brain could just go and explore and it's been really good which was more of the honeymoon beach reading was it uh <laughs> bernacki's book <laughs> unfortunately the the 21st century monetary <laughs> policy because yeah. i i felt like i couldn't stop thinking about uh the economy but a little bit of both I- i'm actually listening to the hail mary book with kate so it's when we're both driving we'll put it in and listen yeah. to it together well you know we're entering some strange times right now you know with interest rates and lots of uh, you know unemployment and mortgages and the real estate world changing um you know let's hope that you're kind of catching the wave at the right time and uh, you know, if indeed we are in for some uh, rocky waters in the coming months, um, you know, those that survive that, you know, will be set up much better uh, as we hit the back half of it. We're, I don't know, I have a degree of confidence that if I just keep operating the way that I'm going to operate, things are going to be fine and then I'll be set up really well. So that's just how. I yeah, I think the things. unfortunate reality about recessions, most recessions, is that they disproportionately affect different mm-hmm. groups of people. Um, and I think just candidly if if you're operating in the short term rental space and you're in a uh, mid to high end rental um i think you're going to be a lot safer than someone who's operating in this space and trying to win on uh on the low end um, yeah. um but that's been, that's been made clear in everything i've listened to also especially at uh the you know str secrets conference it was very much set yourself apart differentiate yourselves you know either be the low end or the high end don't be the middle yeah you know exactly um but i think that um i think that there are also tailwinds for the short-term rental industry just in that uh remote for people who work technology jobs um remote work is here to stay and i think that's going to allow people to travel more often and so people you know a depressed economy is not great obviously but for people who are still in these tech dependent companies that have very high gross margins that are going to do some layoffs but not as much as other companies they're still going to be traveling and very very active and so Mm -hmm. you know i can't predict the future but i do think that they're going to be really nice pockets in the short-term rental industry that continue to do well it'll be like k-shaped some people are going to do really well and some people are going to really struggle and i think the people that do really well if they double down um it's a good time to you know it's a good time to build recessions are a good time to build so well, you're you're the building tech entrepreneur that took off out of New York City during a um, pandemic, <laughs> and you're up in Vermont. You're exactly yeah. practicing what you're preaching, right? Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> um, well, great. Well, Mark, let everyone know where uh, they can learn more about Minoan and learn more about you and and sign up for an account if they qualify and and all that fun stuff. Yeah, you can go to MinoanExperience.com. Minoan spelled M-I-N-O-A-N, and there's a little join us button in the top right that you can apply to 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 join the you know community of hosts and hospitality professionals that use us uh and you can follow us on instagram minoan experience at minoan experience we post a lot of blogs and uh features um you know good content for folks uh, yeah. in the industry there as well and if a host has one property do they qualify yeah yeah when when you apply it's not so like do you have a big it, it's more so understanding your intentions with the space because um it, for a host who's just going to furnish entirely off Facebook Marketplace or hand me downs, it's not really one, it's not something we can help with. And two, it's not really the type of aesthetic that we want. You know, we we put like this says Minoan on it too. It's co branded. And so right. we have our own sort of belief around what a Minoan experience should be and should feel like. And so when the application, it's not about the number of properties, it's about what's your approach to hosting and what's your vision for this property. And, and can we really support you in getting there? Yeah. sort of what we're looking at. 
But when I applied, I got accepted very quickly. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, I told Sage. <laughs> I yep. gave Sage a heads up to look out for your name. So <laughs> yeah. Um, Rory, where can everyone find more about you? Uh, people could find me through my law practice, Urban Village Legal, urbanvillagelegal.com, or my uh, real estate brokerage, Next Home Title Town, nexthometitletown.com. Awesome. And me, Jason, at nexthometitletown.com. You could reach out to me if you want to be a guest on the podcast or you have comments about this. You want to learn more about Mark. You can't find a link to his website for some reason, even though it's going to be down below if you're watching this or if you're listening to it, uh, go look at the show notes. Um, Mark, thank you so much for spending all the time with us. It's been great to see you again. Um, and uh, you know, congratulations on your your wedding and your marriage and hope you had a great honeymoon. And yeah, lots of stuff coming ahead for Minoan. So, um, you know, buckle up, right? We got a big ride coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That flew by. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully talk again very soon. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we, we definitely will. And and thank you for listening uh, or watching the podcast. We really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed the episode, uh, go sign up for Minoan. If you're a short-term rental operator, uh, reach out to us with questions. And we'd love it if you can give us comments or a five-star review uh, as, a, as a host. We should always ask for five-star reviews, but we're going to ask for one as a podcast host as well. So um, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Thank you, Rory. Thank you, Mark. I'm Jason, and that's it. See you next time. This has been the Real Estate Law Podcast. Because real estate is more than just pretty pictures, and law goes well beyond the paperwork and courtroom arguments. We're powered by Next Home Title Town, Greater Boston's progressive real estate brokerage. More at nexthometitletown.com. And Urban Village Legal, Massachusetts Real Estate Council, serving savvy property owners, lenders, and investors. More at urbanvillagelegal.com. Today's conversation was not legal advice, but we hope you found it entertaining and informative. Discover more at realestatelawpodcast.com. Thank you for listening.